أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين صلي على محمد لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين وحجته على الخلائق أجمعين إمامنا وسيدنا وقائد مسيرتنا الحجة بن الحسن المهدي أرواح العالمين له الفدا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الناس من يتخذ من دون الله أندادا يحبونهم كحب الله والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله صدق الله العلي العظيم In this holy verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states Yet there are men who take for worship others beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Equal with God They love them as they should love God But those who believe are stronger in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صلي على محمد وآل محمد It is from the beauty of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has created every human being in need If we were not in need of each other this world would be a disastrous place One reason human beings respect each other and don't oppress each other is because they're in need of each other. When you need someone, when you're in need to your society, to your business, to your friends, to your relatives, to the system that you live in, then you're obligated to respect that system and deal with it in a proper way. Otherwise, you'll be punished. You will face difficult consequences. So it's from the beautiful and perfect system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the human being is created in need. There's a very famous psychologist by the name of Abraham Maslow. This psychologist developed a hierarchy of needs. In his theory, he says that human beings tend to go from one need to another need. صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صلي على محمد وآل محمد He says that human beings have certain types of need and these needs must be fulfilled so that a human being can progress in society The first needs are the physiological needs The need to breathe, the need to eat, the need to drink, the need to sleep the need to marry and mate. These are physical needs that a human being needs in order to advance in society. If these needs are, met, are not met, a human being can't function. A human being cannot function without air or water or food. So these needs must be met so that a human being can progress. Then the second needs, once the physiological needs are met, come the safety needs. A human being needs to feel safe and secure. If there's no safety, there's no progress. Look at Iraq today. They've got an ocean of oil. People are living on an ocean of oil. They have many resources. But one of the reasons that it's so chaotic there and it has become a jungle in Iraq because of lack of safety. When people don't feel safe, they cannot progress in society. You can have all the money in the world, but if there's no safety, a society cannot function. This is what we see in Iraq. The biggest superpower is behind it. God knows what their intentions are, but they have the capabilities. However, the lack of safety has destroyed the country. A human being must feel safe and secure so that he or she can function properly in society. Then, Maslow says that the third need that comes after safety needs are love needs. A human being needs to have a sense of belonging. 
He needs to love and he needs to be loved by other people as well. This is a psychological need that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has created in a human being. This need is very important. Then he goes on to describe the other stages. Now if you look at the beauty of the religion of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a solution for every single need. Every of these needs, each and every of these needs has a solution with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at the physiological needs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through fasting during this blessed month teaches us to restrain our desires. When you abstain from food, from water, from other activities, you strengthen yourself. When you oppose your desires, you emerge as a stronger human being at the end of the month. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to fight some of the, these needs, Allah has created this very extremely important act that we do during this month, and this is fasting. If you look at safety needs, you see that Islam encourages us, encourages us and obligates us to say salam to each other. When you greet someone, you are instilling the concept of safety. How many times a day do you say assalamu alaikum? Over maybe 50, 200 times a day. You're accustomed to this phrase. So when you keep on saying peace be on you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hopefully is wanting us to be familiar with the concept of peace so that we can implement it in our societies. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also created this very important solution. Then we come to the love needs, which are extremely important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also given us the solution. Since a human being is in need, Allah has created a perfect solution for us. If we analyze the love of a human being, we find that in most cases, the love of a human being is not genuine. It's not real. It looks real. But when you analyze it carefully and you dig deep into it, you find that a human being is not sincere in his love. He does so simply to guard his personal interests. So to give you an example, every human being has love at different levels. The first level exists at the individual level. Every human being loves his or herself. No one can deny that. We all love ourselves. But if you look at a human being, if you look at his love for himself, you see that it's not genuine. Why? Because if you really love yourself, then you would never harm yourself. A human being always harms himself constantly by sinning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that there would be a day in which you will face the punishment. Here in this life, Allah will punish you before the hereafter. So when you sin, you are going against yourself. When you wrong someone, you're oppressing yourself. You're harming yourself. Now if you really love yourself, why would you ever harm yourself? So accept the true believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if a human being claims to love him or herself, it's not genuine. It's something temporary. Most people love themselves because of this life, because of the worldly blisses and pleasures, but not something eternal that remains and stays with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first type of love. At the first level, for the individual level. The second type of love, which is more powerful, is the love for our family and our children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled a powerful love. But even this love... Believe it or not, in many people, in many people, it's not genuine either. Several decades ago, they conducted an experiment with a monkey. You know, even the animal, subhanAllah, Allah has put so much mercy in the heart of an animal that it gives so much affection and attention to its offspring and to its child. They put a monkey with its baby in a cage. And what they did, they heated the bottom of the cage to see what the mother would do. Would she save her child or would she abandon her child? Listen to this experiment. It's very interesting. 
So the scientists noted that as the floor, as the bottom of the cage was being heated, the mother sensed the, da the danger. So she took her baby and she carried the baby to keep it away from her. They began to heat it up and heat it up. So the monkey began, on, began lifting one foot and putting another foot. But yet she was holding on to her baby in order to protect it. Then they kept on heating the cage so much to the extent that now her feet were burning. She couldn't take it anymore. You know what the monkey did? She put the baby on the ground and she stood on her baby to protect her life. During that last moment, that true love showed itself. Many times you see human beings, they love their children or love their families because of a psychological need they have. It's not genuine. Of course, this does not all apply to everyone. Of course not. But to most people. Either they do so because of social obligations or because they feel as if they need to do so. If they don't, they will feel a void in their life and get depressed. So in order to allow themselves to feel good, they display their love towards their children. A mother needs to love her child. If she doesn't love her child, she will feel a void in her heart. She'll feel depressed. She'll feel lonely. By expressing love to her child, a mother does service to herself before she does service to the child. It's because of the psychological need that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in us. This is the second level. The third level of love is for our community, for our societies. And this is not really genuine as well. Because a human being loves his society because he benefits from his society. Because he feels as if he belongs to the society. If you don't belong to a particular group, community or society, you tend not to love them as much because you're not benefiting from them. It goes back to your personal interest. This is the third type of love. And finally, the fourth type of love, the fourth level of love is the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To love the ultimate being, the greatest being, our creator and our master. What's interesting is that even at this level, you see that the love of the average human being is not genuine. This is because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because either we want to seek his heaven or we want to avoid his hell. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, in a very beautiful hadith, many of you have heard it. He says there are people who worship Allah. Why? Because they want his heaven. They're greedy for that heaven. Then the Imam says this is the worship of traders and merchants, of businessmen. They do so because it's in their own interest, which is even accepted. Allah is so merciful, even if you obeyed Him and loved Him because of His heaven, He'll accept that from you and He will take you to heaven. This is because Allah is merciful. Then Imam Ali says, there are others who worship Allah because they fear His hell. This is the worship of slaves. A slave obeys his master simply to avoid the whip and the stick. Then he says, there are a few people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they have found Him worthy of being praised. That's why. This is the worship of the true and noble man, Imam Ali says. So you see that the average human being loves Allah for personal interest. Not that genuine expected type of love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the conclusion is that the love a human being, the, an average human being has, is not genuine. Whether that's at the individual level, the family level, the social level, or at the level of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first part of our need, the need to love. But this has a second part as well. A human being also needs to be loved. You see, Allah is so merciful. When it comes to this part, Allah has given us everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all the love we want, all the mercy we want. The genuine type of mercy. And Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, some traditions narrate, that before the event of Ashura in Karbala, once Imam al Hussein was looking at his enemy, some 20, 30, 40,000 soldiers who had gathered to kill him, he looked at them, then he cried. His sister Zainab came to him. 
He says, oh, Imam, I've never seen you cry. You're a brave man. I've never seen you cry before the enemy. Why is it that you have cried? He said, no, my sister Zainab, don't misunderstand me. I'm not crying because I'm afraid of the enemy. I am crying because I see thousands of people go to hell because of me. I'm crying for them. This is the genuine type of love that Islam has given us. This is true and genuine love. He cries for his own enemies because he has mercy on them. He wants the best for them. This is the love of Imam al-Hussein When the Prophet, peace be upon him, was sent as a messenger and he delivered the message to the Meccans, the first thing they did, they started chasing him and throwing stones and rocks at him. They wronged the Prophet. Traditions state that the Prophet, he ran away, he retreated to a mountain because they were chasing him. And his forehead had broken and the blood was spilling from his forehead. The Prophet gathered the blood in his hands so that it doesn't fall to the earth because if it would fall to the earth, Allah would send his punishment. Then the angels came to the Prophet. They told him, oh Prophet, just give us the signal and we'll destroy these people who did this to you. Just give us the signal. What would you do if you were in the Prophet? You've been chased for 40 years. You've done service to your society. You're known as the truthful person. Now you bring a message from Allah and this is what they do to you. What would you do to your people? The average human being would destroy them if he or she had the opportunity. The Prophet looks at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Rabbi di qawmi fa innahum la ya'lum. He says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He said, Oh Allah, please guide my people for they do not know. They're ignorant. The Prophet asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him. This is the genuine love that he has for humanity. This love that was connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the great mercy of Allah is that He loves us, but we don't display and we don't reciprocate that absolute type of love to Him as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there for us, my brothers and sisters. Even if the world stays against you, stands against you, and you feel lonely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there. One of the biggest reasons for suicide those who have attempted suicide, they have disclosed the reason. They say because we feel as if no one in the world cares about us. This is the number one reason for suicide, my brothers and sisters. They feel as if no one in the world cares about them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given every human being that chance to connect to Him. No matter where you are, in what condition, what happened to you, what tragedy you're facing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there to receive our love. Imam Zayn al-Abidin says, Ilahi bithikraka aasha qalbi. Oh Allah, by simply remembering you, my heart lives. Wa bi munajatika barrattu alam al-khawfi andi. And oh Allah, by speaking to you, by conversing with you, I have frozen the pain that exists in my heart. This is how our Imams addressed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had realized that the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is infinite. That's why they couldn't get enough. And Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, Sayyidi, ana min hubbika aja'i'u la ashba'i. He says, oh Allah, I'm always hungry for your love. Ana min hubbika dham'anu la arwa'i. He says, oh Allah, I'm always thirsty for your love. And this thirst can never be quenched. He says, oh, I have this longing to the one who sees me, but I don't see him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful as he shows us his presence and we can feel his presence. So my respected brothers and sisters, we have to strive to attain the true type of love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That love which will earn us the satisfaction of Allah. The Quran says, yes, Allah will give the believers paradise and gardens and rivers and eternal bliss. But the Quran says, min Allahi akbar. But the satisfaction of Allah is by far the greatest thing Allah can ever give you. To be satisfied with you. Knowing that your creator 
the master of the universe you live in is satisfied with you. This is the greatest status a human being can ever achieve. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach that level. Prophet Isa alayhi salam one day was walking with his companions. He reaches a place and his companions were busy finding treasures, gold, silver, diamonds, jewelry, rubies. So Prophet Isa says, while you're busy here, he was speaking to his companions, I'll go find my own type of treasure. You're busy with this worldly treasure. So while they were going after their own worldly materialistic treasure, Prophet Isa goes searches. He arrives at a village. He sees an old woman in the middle of ruins. He goes to the house of this old woman. He spends the night, the night there, and her son comes. So she reveals to Prophet Isa after trusting him, after confiding in him, that her son has a very big problem. Please try to help him. He says, what's his problem? She says, my son is very poor. Every day from morning till sunset, he goes out simply to carry some pieces of wood and he brings it home to sell it. That's his job every day. One day he was passing by the palace of the king and he sees the daughter of the king. Immediately he falls in love with her. Ever since he's been so depressed, he wants to marry her, but look at his status. He's a poor man and she's the daughter of the king. How can he ever reach her? So this man was very upset. He was almost dying. In one statement, one hadith states that he used to always say, لا أرى لذلك دواء إلا الموت. He said, my medicine is death. I can't live anymore. I cannot live like this. Prophet Isa salam says, do you really want to marry her? He said, yes. He said, then I'll show you the way. You just listen to me, listen to my instructions, and I'll take you to her. So he tells this man, tomorrow go knock at the door of the palace, see the king and tell him, I've come here to marry your daughter. He told him, are you kidding? With my clothes, with my periods? He'll kick me out. He said, just trust me, listen to me. Go and see what happens. You don't have anything to lose. The following day he goes, he knocks at the door, the guard at the door laughs at him. You've come here to marry his daughter? Are you nuts? He says, please, just let me see him. It's none of your business. Let me in. He goes in, he speaks to the king, and he informs him of why he had come there. So the king tells him, fine, I'll give you my daughter with one condition. If you bring me this much gold, silver, rubies, and diamonds, very precious gems that even the greatest kings did not have. Of course, he was stipulating an impossible condition for him. He told him, if you bring me these specifications, this amount of money and gold, I'll give you my daughter. He goes back to Prophet Isa salam. He told him what the king had told him. Prophet Isa salam said, go to this ruin close by to your house. Take some rocks. As soon as you take these rocks, they will turn into gold and silver. And take it to the king. He does that. He brings exactly what the, king's, what the king wanted from him. He presents it to the king. The king, after seeing this, treasures that even the greatest kings did not have, he said, no, nope, that's not enough. Bring me even more. So he goes to Prophet Isa, and Prophet Isa says, go to the same ruins and do the same thing and you'll get more. He goes and he takes the rocks, transfers it into gold, through the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes it to the king. After the king sees this, he accepts, he gave him his word. He says, fine, now that you brought me all these treasures, you can marry my daughter. So they make the date for the wedding, and this man marries this woman whom he had fallen in love with. Then, after a while, Prophet Isa comes to him, or actually this man goes to Prophet Isa 
Prophet Isa was very humble. If you look at him, you would think he's a very poor man. He had no house. His clothes were very simple. He did not own anything in this life. He would go from village to another. So it struck to him. He said, wait a minute. If you're such a great man, you have such powers. You made me marry the daughter of the king. And after a while, the king died. So he became the king himself. He told me, you made me the greatest king. Why are you in such a state? I couldn't sleep last night thinking about this. To see someone like you with all these powers, not using them in this state. So Prophet Isa salam, gives him the real answer. This goes back to the genuine type of love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Isa says, إِنَّ لَنَا فِي قُرْبِهِ تَعَالَى وَمَعْرِفَتِهِ وَمَحَبَّتِهِ لَذَّاتٌ رَوْحَانِيَّةٌ لَا نَعُدُّ تِلْكَ اللَّذَّاتِ الْفَانِيَةِ عِنْدَهَا شَيْءٍ Prophet Isa says, when I look at my status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I look at my knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I find so much pleasure in that, that I even forget about the pleasures of this world. In fact, the pleasures of the world don't mean anything when I compare it to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he told him, wait a minute, if... What I'm doing is wrong because I'm after this world and I'm now going after my temptations, being a king and being submerged in this material world. Why have you done this to me? From what I understand, you're saying that to be a king who forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he sees his kingdom and wealth, then he will be doomed. So why have you done this to me? Prophet Isa told him, I just wanted to test you. He told Prophet Isa, then I have passed the test. He takes the crown, he puts it, and he goes after Prophet Isa salam, living in that humble life. Prophet Isa takes him back to his companions where he had left them off. He told his companions, you have found your treasure, your gold and silver, and I have found my treasure, this man, who left this kingdom for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Al-Imam Al-Hussein salam in one very beautiful hadith, and I'll conclude. He says, "Anta al-ladhi azalt al-aghiyara min qulubi ahbaik, hatta lam yuhibu siwaq." He says, "Oh Allah, you're the one who has given your true believers the only and exclusive love to you, so that they have not loved anyone except you." Ma'da wajda man faqadak. He said, "Oh Allah." What has he found, the one who has lost you? If one loses Allah, what has he found? In this universe, what has he found? And what has he lost, the one who has found you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This was the tongue of our Imams, my respected brothers and sisters. In Dua Kumail, Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam recites this very beautiful dua. فبعزتك يا سيدي ومولاي أقسم صادقا لإن تركتني ناطقا Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam says Oh Allah, assuming that you do take me to hell You know what I would say? Oh Allah, if you allow me to speak, this is what I would say تركتني ناطقا لا ضجنا إليك بين أهلها ضجيج الآملين ولا أصرخنا إليك صراخ المستصرخين He says, oh Allah, if you put me in hell, I will cry and I will speak. I will cry as if someone has lost something. I will cry the cry of those who are hopeful. وَلَا أَبْكِيَنَّا عَلَيْكَ بُكَاءَ الْفَاقِدِينَ وَلَا أُنَادِيَنَّكَ أَيْنَ كُنْتَ يَا وَلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ I said, oh Allah, where have you been? Oh, the guardian of the believers, why have I lost you? In another hadith, Al-Imam Al-Sajjad salam in the beautiful, very beautiful dua says, oh Allah, if you put me in hell, I will declare to the entire inhabitants of hell of my love to you. You see that genuine love. If a believer 
for the sake of argument, let's see that let's say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a believer to hell. What is the first thing that a believer would say? He would say, Allah, why have you brought me here? Where is your justice? The Imam says, No, Allah, I will not ask you about that. I will if you put me in hell, I'll inform everyone in hell that I love you. This is the genuine type of love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, we have to take that love and show it with Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam Because one hadith says, Man, man mata ala hubbi ali Muhammadin mata shaheeda. The one who dies with the love of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad dies as a shaheed, as a martyr. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Another poet expresses this true love for Ahl al-Bayt. He says, حُبُّ عَلِي ابن أبي طالبي أحلى من الشهد لدى الشاربي The love for Ali ibn Abi Talib is sweeter than honey if you drink it. لو فتشوا قلبي رأوا وسطه خطان خطة خطين خطة بلا كاتبي If you dissect my heart and if you open my heart you will see, you will see two lines without any writer. You will see that there are two lines of poetry in my heart without any writer. Al-Adl wa tawheed fi janibi. The justice of Allah, the belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on one line. Wa hubbu alil bayt fi janibi. And the love of Ahlul Bayt on the other line. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always guide us to the straight path to grant us the genuine and true type of love so we can save ourselves in this life before the hereafter. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the intercession of Prophet Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.